be awesome. Well, in other words, one requires the other, and the first thing required is a military presence on the border with Mexico. They're putting military on the borders with Austria because they're being overrun by Muslims. But Barry from Honolulu apparently likes the invasion. I wouldn't necessarily say. Where are they going to get fresh voters from except by importing them? The American people have tapped out on progressivism. They don't want it anymore. There's only a certain number of them. So where are they going to get new ones from? They've got to import them. All right, uh, you you got the uh, answer, Daryl. Free copy of Government Zero goes out to you. Let's go to the next caller, Alexandria, Virginia, WMAL. Mike, go ahead, please. What's on your mind? Hey, sir. I was just uh, in the, the bookstore down on King Street, and they're they're telling me they're out of it. They don't they don't have the book. I was I was trying to go over it with my father tomorrow. No, night. Wait, you, you, wait, you, King Street in, in which city? In in Old Town, right there, Alexandria. Alexandria, Virginia. Now, is that a conservative city or a liberal area, rather? Oh, it, it's it's bleeding heart left and right everywhere you go. Mm hmm. Well, maybe they sold it out, uh, Mike. Telling me, uh, you know, and I, I said, well, maybe we we can look over in the, you know, the Anton LeVay department. You stash it over there, or something like that. And they didn't even kind of get that reference, but well, uh, I don't know what kind of what was it a Barnes and Noble? What kind of bookstore, Mike? I believe it was, yeah, Barnes and Noble, yeah. But, but well, no, all the Barnes and Nobles ordered the book. It could be that it's sold out, Mike. It could be that they're not hiding. It could just be gone, just being bought. You know, I'm sending you free copies to stay on the line, okay? Uh, w A B C Abby, go ahead, please. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi, I, hi. How are you? I just wanted to say that I agree with you, uh, mostly on everything except for the part about the affirmative action as it pertains to blacks, because blacks. I mean, you know the history. We've been we're economically disadvantaged even now. Other groups come here and write on the back of blacks. Um, the Native Americans are even entitled to certain things when they fought on the side of the Confederacy. And blacks have fought in every single war um, that this country has had loyally, unlike other groups who come here and don't even like to be American. They just want the American benefits. All right, let, let's have a rational discussion about affirmative action, Abby. You know and I know that affirmative action is unfair on the face of it, isn't it? Or not? No, I disagree. That's the whole... That's the whole oh, well, let's start I, with the discussion. Let's take two children in college of any, any race. They, um, one child works hard and gets straight A's, does all sorts of great extra, extracurricular stuff, and the other one gets straight C's. Are you saying that the child who gets the C's should win the prize, not the one who gets the A's? Well, let me tell you, when you put it like that, obviously on its face, that's not fair. But when you look at how money is distributed to schools in predominantly black areas, now you see there is about almost 40 percent um, less than what we distributed in white areas. Now, that's, that's totally false, and I'll give, you, I'll give you a clear example. I live in the San Francisco area. There is a community in Sausalito, California, known as Marin City. Marin City is largely African-American. Uh, these houses were built for the workers who built our liberty ships in World War II uh, at the Kaiser shipyards. I studied this. The average, the average student, the average student, the amount of dollars for each average student, the average student uh, receives, they send uh, $15,000 a year is spent on the average student in Marin City Public Schools. The statewide average is half that. Yet, I'm sorry to tell you that despite the fact that twice the amount of money is spent, uh, the results are not quite as promising as you may expect. So you can't argue that money itself is going to change the results, can you? No, I definitely would not say money itself, but there are other areas where the money is not being spent the same. That's, that's just a fact. And no, but I, wait, I just gave you the facts. and I mean, There are many communities like this. Uh, cities, states, counties have bent over backwards to help, quote, disadvantaged communities, and the results apparently don't seem to change very much. But you have to also look at why the results don't change. If you've been putting people in poor schools for the last, I mean, look up until the 70s, they've had laws up, up in the books that were, you know, contrary to just black liberty. When you have laws like that, it just sets a train effect. You have a grandmother who may be... I, I, sorry, I, 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 was, I was the son of an immigrant family. My grandmother didn't even speak English. My father ne never went past the second year in high school. How is it that I've been able to achieve so well? Do you think somebody did it for me? 
Well, I think we're just going to disagree on that point. So I wonder, what is your feelings about the Native Americans? They fought well, wait, no, but you didn't answer me. How did I achieve what I've achieved being an immigrant son? Did someone give it to me? They didn't. I didn't get affirmative action. Well, I, came from a, I came from a poor family. I spoke with a slum dialect when I was young. I still do to a certain extent. You can call it a speech impediment. It hasn't stopped me. Why is that, do you think? We're going to disagree on that. I think that because... Well, what's there to disagree? You're not answering the question. We're not disagreeing. You refuse to answer the question. How is it that some people struggle out of poverty without the help of the government? No, there are some people. That's, that's, I'm not denying that. But what I'm saying is that you have, you have a specific group of people, referring to blacks, who were deliberately kept down. And as a result of that, they're not financially where they should be today. They're not economically where they should be today. All right, so let's look at the facts. To get, let's look at the facts together. You're saying that one of my solutions to save America, you disagree with, which you're entitled to do, because I'm not a liberal. I agree in, in, uh, in discussing things. I said end affirmative action. On page 319, I write, we've had a black president, black cabinet members from both parties, a black chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, black CEOs of Fortune 100 corporations, and black billionaires. But listen what I write next. None of these achieved their success through affirmative action. I said none of them had. And then I conclude, affirmative action is racism defined as it assumes people of color need special privileges to make it. Clearly, black Americans have proven they don't. It's time to kill affirmative action. I don't think that that's a racist statement, do you? Oh, no, no, I did not say that's a racist statement. I'm not well, you know, you're a very reasonable person. You see, you're not arguing with me from the point of view of anger. You're not saying my statement is racist. You're saying you think that we need affirmative action. Now, that's an actually a reasonable statement you make, and it's done with reason. I disagree with it. But to show you that we're going to go away, friends and neighbors, not enemies, I'm sending you a free copy of Government Zero. The time is... 20 minutes after the hour, I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. All right, stop the music. Stop the music, says Jimmy Durante Savage. Listen. You know, I, I'm doing my own Facebook posting now. I didn't for years. I paid no attention to it. But then I started doing it about a month ago. So I'm very interested in which postings of mine attract the most attention. So the other day I put a picture up of Teddy asleep with a copy of my book next to him. And I wrote, uh, I, I, Teddy falls asleep by after reading a good book. And it trended 95% more than most of my other stories. Now, I put up serious stuff, half the response rate. Reviews that love government zero, they're so well written, a third the response rate. So you know what I just did? Teddy fell asleep again after lunch just now. I eat my lunch, he eats his lunch. Of course, we eat different food. I couldn't resist it, so I'm posting another picture of <laughs> Teddy asleep. It's so cute. I mean, come on, how do you not love your animals? I, I went up to him while he's sleeping on his big, big bed next to me as I talk on the radio and I put a copy of the book and I wrote a little headline I said another chapter down I needed a good nap it's going to be up on Facebook soon my guess is it'll trend faster than anything I put up recently is things about the country falling apart and the things being done by progressives people still love dogs do you know that anyway one of the best reviews on Amazon is from a gentleman named Thunder Chief Thud of the Ojito tribe and he says I can be brief this easy-to-read, common-sense, plain-spoken book is the most important work you could ever read, and you really need to read it. Whatever you may think of Michael Savage, is one of the most observant and incisive writers and thinkers living. I love this guy and the fresh and nationalism he stands for and advocates. advocates. Savage has gone out alone on a very dangerous limb, but believes everything he says and doesn't say anything he doesn't believe. By contrast, there are others who continue to play it safe, hiding out in their past, appearing to still be wild and sexy, but living in mental pantyhose. Not only should you buy Government Zero, he writes, but you need to listen to Savage on the radio for a week. The veracity of his unparalleled monologues, as well as his telegraphed to the gut writing, are unmatched in our current age of insanity. I did not, I did not always love this guy. I had to first figure out his inherent sincerity and, and prove that his honesty was real. Ergo, sometimes only half of the equation is discernible, making Savage a Galileo of our age. Moreover, he is an almost super maturely prophetic 
wise man walking alone in a desert. Like that scene in Lawrence of Arabia where Peter O'Toole emerges from an unpassable section of desert called the Sun's Anvil, but alive, unexpected, and dangerous. He writes, buy this book, buy several, and give them out to those who need to know the unobscured truth. I don't know who the gentleman is, but uh, Chief Thunder Thud of the, the Ojito tribe, thank you very much. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. 34 minutes after the hour, Savage Nation broadcasting out to America from San Fran, Cisco. I don't even know I can still say the word correctly anymore. I got to tell you something funny, though. Look, so I put the picture up of Teddy four minutes ago, seven minutes ago, of him sleeping on his back on a big bed, his own bed, by the way. A hotel gave it to me once. I hope no, that name isn't on. So, okay, I went up to him during the break, and I put a copy of the book, Government Zero, next to it, and I put a little headline on it. Another chapter down, need a nap. You want to hear the kind of things people are writing? Listen to this. Frightening reality, read your book, Michael. That would cause me to take a mental break and a good nap, too. <laughs> Says David Lamont. That's funny. The other comments are funnier. Come on, people love dogs. Let's see, they send me pictures of their dogs. Uh, I admire his fastidiousness to take such good notes. Look at all the post-its on Teddy's book. Another one writes, Teddy is a hard worker. Now, that's a loaded statement, as you well know. Teddy is a hard worker. Now, that refers to the genius on MSNBC who says that you can't use the phrase hard worker because it demeans the work of slaves 150 years ago. I, I'm not making this. So you can't make this up. It's unbelievable to me. Then someone says, that's a dog. Another one says, I would love to actually see his face. Well, you can't. His ears are covering his face. Another one says, God bless the little big Teddy. A lot of heart he has on him. Listening to you now, love the pick of Teddy. Another one says, I hope my copy of Government Zero came in the mail today. Listening to you live as always. I get your book on iTunes. It's amazing. You don't BS, do you? Man after my own heart, says David Vargas. Pretty good. I mean, I never was on this thing. You could see how it gets addictive, right? I could see why the people walk around all day long on their iPhones now. Eventually, I'll, I'll regress. I think I'll become like a kid. I'll put my hat on backwards. I'll march around and just communicate on Twitter, and that's all. That's all I need to know. I don't know. I may have to get Teddy a pair of pants, so I'll have to get him like a pair of chimpanzee pants. It's a little embarrassing, but that's what dogs do. They lay on their back, and they show you with a whole... Uh, you don't know what to do. You know, you're going to publish a picture with a diaper over? I don't know what to do. They don't, they're not embarrassed. That's how they, they are. That's why we love them. Dogs are our little hobos. They're our personal beatniks. They're our personal hippies. They're our personal progressives laying on the floor, not working. They don't work. They have no, no known form of income. They live off the, the, the kindness of uh, the owner of the house. They're much like progressives. Dogs are like progressives when you think about it. No, he has no living. doesn't make a living doing anything. just lays there. You feed him. You love him. Kiss him. God bless dogs. That's all. Let's take some calls. WFTL in Fort Lauderdale. Michael, welcome to the program. Hello. Yes, you're on the radio. What's on your mind? Great. Uh, I wanted you to know that the uh, book is doing well in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida at Costco. As a matter of fact, I uh, got the last one. I wanted to get one for my, one of my uh, progressive friends, but unfortunately, uh, they're out of stock. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you a free one for a progressive. Actually, give away the one you just bought to a progressive, and I'll send you one from me. But the thing is, where is that Palm Beach Gardens? Did you say? Yeah, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Yeah, yeah. No, I know the area very well. It's uh, it's near near Palm Beach, correct? A little north. Uh, not really, no. It's, uh, Palm Beach is an island, and, uh, you have to go over the intercoastal to get to Palm Beach. Palm Beach Gardens is, uh, west of that. Oh, west? Oh, you're inland. I actually thought it was north. I didn't know that. And, um, that's where Donald Trump hails from half the year, doesn't he, over in Palm Beach? Well, he's in Palm Beach, yeah. Yeah, he's got that great American flag flying over his club at Mar-a-Lago. Okay, my friends, stay on the line. We'll send one out for your progressive friends, actually for you. 855-400-7282. Let's go to KSFO in San Francisco. Line number eight. Go ahead, please. What's on your mind, my friend? Hi, Michael. I've been listening to you since day one. 
What, for 21 years now? Yes, I heard you on uh, Saturday, the first Saturday.